afternoon. Welcome to this edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show. My name is Leon Jones. Today is Tuesday, November 15th, 2016. Tune in to the 401 Talk Zone Radio Show every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Blog Talk Radio. Guest call in numbers 215-383-5785. If you like the channel, please feel free to subscribe so I can give you educational content from a professional and mature perspective. Also on this channel, we don't engage in any controversial issues or debate. We strictly adhere to principles of knowledge because in education, knowledge is power. If you have a business that you would like for me to discuss on YouTube and Blog Talk Radio, please email me at lej6521 at gmail.com. If you have a comment, please leave your comment in the comment section. And make sure your comments are pithy. No bloviating or petty fogging if you wish to opine. Now on to this afternoon's topic. Name of this video is going to be principles of leadership. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a video on the differences between management and leadership. Now, in this segment, I'm just going to go ahead and give you the principles of leadership and a principle is basically a belief. And you need beliefs or standards in order to become an effective leader. Now, the first principle of the day that I'm going to give you when it comes to any type of leadership. Number one, you got to know yourself and you have to constantly seek self-improvement. Knowing yourself means that you're going to look in the mirror, not at somebody else, but look in the mirror at yourself. You're going to see where you're going wrong, and then you're going to improve. And this is good because you have an idea of who you really are. Second of all, be technically and operationally proficient. And what I mean by that is understand the technical aspects of yourself. And that's how you perform during everyday tasks. Now, these principles are not just for business. They're for everyday life. So you have to know how you perform technically. And that's basically using the methods of decision or decision science and you are putting them into action and that's the operation. You understand that you need to fix a problem and then you put it into action. The technical is knowing what the problem is and the operational is taking the action to fix the problem and that's a good aspect of a leader. Number three, develop a sense of responsibility among your subordinates. Well, in the workplace, a subordinate is somebody who is lower than the supervisor. But you should always take accountability for your actions. This is what makes you different from a manager. A leader is the one who oversees the whole organization whether it's failing or whether it is succeeding. And in life, this is what you have to do when you're in a household. If something's going wrong in your household, you are the owner and the CEO of your household. You need to take stands to fix any problems. And also, you need to see what you're doing well, and build off of that as well. In other words, there's a problem, fix it. If you're doing well, you build off of it. Make sound and timely decisions. That is what we all need to do in life. Most of us make decisions out of impulse or desperation. This is why we end up in the peril that we're in. Make sure you think about the decision. You don't have to overanalyze it. But take some notes by utilizing pros and cons. 
and understand the decisions you make today can also benefit what's going to go on in the future. Set the example. Leaders always understand that in order to influence, you have to be someone of influence. That means you must have ethics and integrity. You must present that to the ones who are following you. In other words, sell that premise because your followers are going to be leaders one day. And when they mimic you, they want to mimic the integrity and the ethics that you are setting for them. Know your staff and look out for their welfare. This is a big one. And this goes in life too. If I'm a manager slash leader, I'm going to throw those two interchangeably right now. There's going to be some decisions in an organization that you don't want to make. And you're going to feel very bad about it. Now, if you're a callous and you don't feel bad about it, and I'm talking about like firing somebody. If you actually can go home and sleep at night, then you don't care about the situation. But when I start looking out for people's welfare, particularly the ones who are working for me, before I would fire somebody, I'm going to see if I have another position to put this person into to see if it fits that individual. Because if you terminate someone's employment, at the end of the day, it's going to have a domino effect into their family, to their lifestyle, and it's going to become a very stressful situation. And suicides, divorces, even workplace violence where an employee is going to come back and create harm to the former boss and the former employees sometimes will take place over the stress. So you have to look at the situation and be very caring because welfare is actually caring about somebody. It's looking out for their interests, their health. Because, again, I don't like to fire people. Sometimes it's necessary, but take another precaution, counseling. Put them in another place of employment within that company if there's an opening. But utilize a work objective or work plan before you fire somebody. And you're showing that worker that you care. And you're giving them a chance to show you that they're willing to do what it takes to get the task done. Keep your staff informed. Most of the time at work, there are a lot of changes that take place. Let me give you an example. I used to be in the United States Navy. The Navy, we used to have rating badges on top of our crows. See the Navy uniform, you have your crow right here, your rating badge, and then you have your chevrons if you're a third class, a second class, a first class, a chief, a senior chief, or a master chief petty officer. Well, what the Navy has done, they've done a gradual change basically without letting anybody know they've already scrapped the rates. And now they want to make the jobs, instead of having your Navy ratings, they want to try to utilize the same system that the Army, the Air Force, and the Marines have. And what it's doing, it's causing confusion. And one thing that individuals have a hard time doing is adhering to change, especially if it's sudden, not gradual, but sudden. And that's because the leadership up top did not inform the subordinates below. And that's where you have the infighting between management and employees. As a leader, you need to keep everybody informed. 
because in every organization, you're going to have change. And as a leader, you're responsible for that change in that organization. You're going to keep hearing me mentioning responsibility because at the end of the day, anything that goes on in, in any organization and your household is the responsibility and accountability of all leaders in that household. Now, also, seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. Okay. I'm going to give you an example. A lot of us look for a job. And when we go interview for a job, particularly if it's a job that we can get a promotion, which there's more responsibility, well, a lot of us look at that goal on the outside of seeking more responsibility as something good until we get into that responsibility. Then we find out we really don't want it. So here's what you got to do. You got to know what that responsibility is before you take responsibility. So don't go and jump in to a situation that's going to have a income of negativity. So make sure before you seek that responsibility, understand once you have seek that responsibility, now you got to take that responsibility. Now, of course, in America, when it comes to any job, nobody tells us to stay on any job. We can leave. But before you take a job, make sure it benefits you. Because at the end of the day, but what goes on in the corporate world, references, you can burn bridges. And you don't want to do that. Ensure each task understood, supervised, and accomplished. That's self-explanatory. If you send out a task, a delegated task, make sure you know what you're delegating. Make sure that that task is properly supervised. Make sure that the tools are in place to get the task accomplished. Train your staff as a team. As a leader, you always want to grow your staff. In any business, certainly you can have a self-employment, but you don't grow as fast being a self-employed individuals, just a one-person operation, you need a team around you to grow. And if you promote your team, your business is going to be promoted. Now, that takes trust on both ends. But at the end of the day, if you follow the right principle of having integrity and ethics and understand that business is a team effort, then your team members are going to trust you and they're going to follow you because at the end of the day, they want to become leaders. So let me put it in perspective. If your team succeeds, you'll succeed. Employ your organization in accordance with its capabilities. That's correct. Don't overburden yourself. In fact, my company, Quality Control Inspection Services, when I bid jobs, I utilize what they call a statement of capability. These are the services that I'm capable of doing. So when I'm searching for a job to bid, I want to make sure that the current position or the current need for, let's say, an inspector I can meet, and that's what my capability statement says. So, in other words, you have a company, make sure that you're qualified to perform the service that you are presenting. Otherwise, your business is going to fail, and you will have a bad reputation. This is why starting a business and you're trying to get resources, you're always asked for a resume and it's pertinent that you ask for a resume 
if you're going to have a lender giving you money because they want to make sure that you can do the job. So if you understand these principles that I've given you, and they're not just for business, they're for everyday life, you can be an effective leader. And that's this edition for the 401 Talk Zone Radio Show. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. Just remember to be respectful and peaceful to one another. Have a wonderful and blessed afternoon.